And I've got my father who always had nice cars. I mean, there's a picture of me as a baby um, in a Lamborghini Countach uh, like this Your big. Your dad's? Yeah. And so you're spoiled brat. Yeah, yeah, I'm white privileged for sure. No, uh, <laughs> my dad fired me and I had to go out and actually go make some, some moves on my own. And of course I got an estimate and they're like, it's gonna be $90,000. I'm like, no problem. This is $90,000? No. And then they come back like, well, it's, it's, it's got some problems with the leakage and the water content and the, so is now it? it's 120 and now it's 130. $225 oh, a month. thing, tough times. It's, it's a, one of the it's nicest still a, RVs. It's still a trailer. It's still a trailer. It's I grew up in an apartment less square feet than this. Look at our roof. Look, look how good our roof is. You should get a new roof. There's a picture of a house. It's so boring. It's so, like, seriously. How many jobs do you think you got because of, uh, from the, uh, from the Maybe week? zero. <laughs> maybe zero. It's just, it's just a cool thing to go. No one hates this idea. No one hates this it's idea. Nice. Today I'm going to show you one of the coolest businesses I have ever visited. Perfect Steel Solutions, Fort Wayne, Indiana. But first, I'm gonna ask you to like this video if you like our company tours. I have spent a day here yesterday. Absolutely amazing company, amazing culture. What they have built is crazy. But if you want us to visit more businesses, you have to engage with our videos because it sends us a signal that you like this type of content. We're gonna make more of it. Now, let me show you what they have. My name is uh, Austin Fain. I am the owner of Perfect Steel Solutions, a metal roofing company in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Good morning, brother. What's going on, big dog? How are you? Good. Glad you're here, uh, man. You made uh, it. Absolutely. Indiana. I already was here earlier. We hit the sauna. Man, I'm telling you this right now. There's nothing better to start a day than a sauna, a little workout, a little competition. little workout. He did the CrossFit <laughs> Championship game, set records in here and everything. In just seven years, Austin Fain has built Perfect Steel Solutions into a $10 million company. In this booming Midwest market, they are growing by 30% year over year. But this is no ordinary contractor. Perfect Steel manufactures and installs their own metal. Some of the stuff that sets us apart from other roofing companies in uh, maybe whatever area you're in um, is that we make everything in-house. We have 75 employees here, from the girls that take the phone calls in the front, um, to ever the men and women that go out and find the jobs and knock on doors, to the people that install the roofing systems for us, the people that make the roofing systems in-house. We have everyone for every single part of the business. This is probably the longest meeting table I've seen. Yeah, it's we, like got, what, like so we can go longer. 40, 50 feet? Yeah. How many sales reps do you have? Uh, we have seven reps right now. Eventually, we had this at the old office when it was just a four-person table and then we just kept on adding on, adding on, adding on and now uh, these, these sections are four <laughs> foot so now it's like 30, 40 foot. Austin's growth mindset doesn't stop with his ever-expanding conference table. He built a gym on site so his team can work out every morning with a personal trainer. Yeah, since COVID we started buying equipment from the gyms that were closing down that were not being able to open and uh, we acquired so much equipment and then eventually got a personal trainer in here after my, the guy who owned all the equipment um, wanted, wanted, wanted to go into real estate. And then so we got a personal trainer in here. They come every day at 6 a.m. or 6.45. Um, they work out, me and the crew, um, and uh, we just go ahead and get it in here. And we have a nice setup now. I mean, it's, it's grown. It started with just the basic dumbbells and a few machines. Then as time goes on now, uh, since you inspired us, uh, cold plunge, sauna, uh, everything. And now they're gonna get a sold bike after that. This is the most roofing exercise yes. you, can, you can get. Tell me the story here. Why did you buy this machine? Everything else wasn't really a machine here. It was all just regular stationary stuff. And I wanted to get something that would be super hard. That would be like a total body workout. And obviously being in the roofing game and stuff, this came to mind. It's a never ending ladder, Jacob's ladder. Um, very cool piece of machinery. And, and, and most of the time, uh, we were setting like two, three minutes at a time. And then Dimitri comes in here the other day and he quit at 15 minutes because he was bored. His, his heartbeat started to go down. He got comfortable on it. The gym is impressive, but it's just one part of Perfect Steel's 30,000 square foot facility. 
The first thing you notice walking through is shiny, clean floors. So I love your floors. This is my videographer, uh, Igor, keeps saying that he's never seen a warehouse with such a clean floors. Yeah. Tell me about the floors. Why did you decide to do this? Because this is a very thick coat. How much did it cost you to do, you know, 30,000 square feet here? 30,000 square feet. So when I moved in here, it was only insulation on the sides. It was bare concrete floors. The place was falling down. This guy must have had like a flea market in here or something. It was a mess. And then eventually when I got, I was like, all right, I'm only going to get really one chance when you move in here to do improvements. Cause you know, obviously if yep. mo what happens is most people move in and then like you can't do anything cause you're not going to shut down all this stuff to go redo floors. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna bite the bullet. And of course I got an estimate and they're like, it's going to be $90,000. I'm like, no problem. This is $90,000. No. And then they come back like, well, it's 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 got some problems with the leakage and the water content and the so now yeah. it's 120 and now it's 130. So all in, it was probably 130 thousand for doing the whole 30,000 square foot. But just it the looks floors, amazing. It and that's the first amazing. thing that people say when they come in here. They're like, this is the cleanest factory I've ever been been in. And I'm like, it's mostly have to do with the floors and the I guys. I mean, it looks like Home Depot as far as like racks, but this adds very like home base garage gym floors. From the gym, to the floors, to the racks of product, everything is laid out according to Austin's vision, but he had some help along the way. Austin got his start in the restaurant industry, but he says it was the time spent working for his dad that showed him how to build perfect steel into what it is so today. So where did you learn manufacturing? What kind of training did you do? Like, I was very fortunate to um, grow up in a family uh, that my dad owned a uh, construction company uh, where they would make portable sectional work platforms, barges for shoreline work and, and bridge building and things like that. Um, and, and that's kind of where I dipped my toes into all those things. I got to be from mowing the grass and then uh, working a forklift to sandblasting to working hydraulics to becoming a welder to doing operations, accounting, pur purchasing, all this crazy stuff that so normal, grew people up in it. Yeah. normal people don't get to do all that. They get yeah. to go to a fast food place, then a nice restaurant, and then get into college, and then go into their field and be an intern somewhere, and then they become that thing, you know? And I just got to do whatever I wanted all the time, um, and all this new stuff. Every time someone would get fired or let go, and I needed to go to another place, I could do that. And so I worked my way up in that company, and eventually to sales, um, and uh, so I got to learn all that stuff. I had a good basis of how to work with people, how to acquire things, build relationships, um, the sales stuff, and the general like mise en place. Have you ever heard of that? Like it's a cooking thing, like everything has a place. Um, everything's deliberate when it comes to manufacturing. Um, and so even before all the machines came, I had tape on the floors everywhere yeah, of where all the machines happening. were going to be and the flow systems of how it was going to go. Everything was very intentional when this factory was set up because if you don't do that over the years, you waste a lot of money and, and process and stuff. So I was very lucky to get that information. I, I didn't go to a real college. It's, I went to Brown Mackey. They don't even exist anymore. It's a defunct school. Austin was lucky to get experience working for his dad, but after almost a decade, it came to an end. My dad fired me and I had to go out and actually go make some, some moves on my own. I found this company I really liked. I got, I got I left there and decided to go start my own metal roofing company, which may have been a bad decision or maybe a good decision, we'll find out. Uh, what's up with the cars? Why you don't have a fancy vehicle? Like you're not into the cars? Or Fat, what? mostly. Um, no, I, uh, no, I, I was very fortunate to like have other friends and other stuff that they got into that. And, um, and I've got my father who always had nice cars. I mean, there's a picture of me as a baby, um, in a Lamborghini Countach, uh, like this Your big. Your dad's? Yeah. And so you're spoiled brat. Yeah, yeah, I'm white privileged for sure. No, uh, <laughs> there's this big in, in the, in the, in the center console. And, and, uh, and like Ferraris and Corvettes and stuff. He was always a car guy, instilled all that stuff in me. I like that, I appreciate that. But he was also the same guy that would never take his stuff to car shows. It's for him. He never took it anywhere. No one ever got to even see it because he it was only for him. He'd only drive it around to go get something to eat or go to Lowe's or go on something like that. He would never take it to places where people would 
you know, he would never show off like that. So I think that's part of it is like, I don't think that that's very cool, you know? I mean, uh, I like it when uh, other people, I get to go and see their stuff and, and, and things like that. And I do get cool stuff from now and then. I told you the other day on a roof deal, uh, we got a 1970 Nova SS that's sitting out in a shipping container out here. And, uh, and so like, we'll do something with that eventually. Austin may not have a fancy car, but he does have an RV on site. So what's the story? This is the RV. You, you, you lived in this This is one. the infamous RV. For a year and a half, I lived in this, in the factory, um, where the gym was. And I just lived in here. I ate in here. I went to sleep in here. I'd wake up and work out and then go back to bed and then wake up and work all day in the factory. And then just every day, one, one of the same. So. It really got me through a tough time in my life. I really kind of affectionate to it. And at twenty two hundred twenty five dollars oh, a month, thing, tough times. This it's is a, one of the it's nicest still a, RVs. It's still a trailer. It's still a trailer. It's I grew up in an apartment less square feet than this. Austin bought the RV around the same time he bought the factory. Back then, he was going through a divorce and needed somewhere to live until he could afford something bigger. He owed two million dollars in loans on the building and machinery, but his rent payment just $225 a month. What's the hardest thing um, living in an RV? Is uh, probably, uh, you can't get your mail forwarded to uh, the factory, so you have to have a PO box or send it to a friend's house. That's one, because you don't have an address and you can't send it to a commercial address. You can't? No, I oh, didn't wow. know that. So wow. I thought that you had to have, you have to have a residence for your license and mail. Wow. You can't get it. So like when I moved out or got kicked out anyway, like <laughs> I didn't have a place to go. So I couldn't renew any of my stuff. That was tough. And then it's not like on sure footing. So like it kind of rocks when you walk on it and stuff. It. So that's kind of uneasy. Uh, but other than that, like it's pretty chill. I mean, it's nicer than most apartments. I would say I cooked some of my favorite meals in here and like had people over still and you know, I don't know, it was, it, it was different. I liked having my own space again for a while and it was a good it's reset. Not bad, $225 a month. Yeah. Cannot beat that. Cannot beat that, American made. American made. So yeah. Yeah, apartment will run you like 1,000, 1,500 bucks a month. Definitely a, for probably this nice of an apartment or something like yeah. that would definitely be above 1,000 bucks here in Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana is, uh, is an awesome place to live. We have probably the lowest cost of uh, living um, with still living in a big city. Very family friendly. Uh, we have a bunch of big factories and small businesses alike. It's a very clean town. I would have been living here most of my life. I only had a brief respite in Florida and I came right back to Fort Wayne because that's where I belong. What's going on here? What kind of machine is this? This is our panel line. Um, it's, it's very long. It's over 200 feet long. Um, it starts over there with an uncoiler. Um, and then eventually goes into our panel um, that makes the ribs in, in, after the flat sheet. Power conveyor belt all the way to a powered wrapper um, and where it wraps it and heat shrinks it around our thing so it's easier to transport and it's safer um, and secure. And then it goes down here very easily for the forklift to pick up and then eventually goes on to our uh, loading dock over here um, so that we can load directly on a trailer. We have a trailer with a crane on it um, that will take the product and put it right in the people's driveways, yards, over fences, things like that. So when my roofers get there, they can unassemble it, throw it up there. Um, and uh, it's been a really great line from ASC. Um, they're out of Spokane, Washington. Um, all American made stuff, all American made machines. The roofing industry here in Indiana, um, especially in the Fort Wayne area, is primarily based a lot on Amish. Mexican, and then you have like the bigger players in the area. So like the bigger commercial, the bigger residential guys. We don't have so much storm chasing here. Um, when you go call someone in the phone book or you go through the coupon stuff or one of those things, that's basically you're gonna, you're gonna get a, uh, an Amish crew or you're gonna get a big corporation or, or something like that. One thing that makes Perfect still different is their W2 model. At times it has been harder for them to stop crews and they have had to scale more slowly. But Aspen says the payoff has been building a highly skilled team. This is very cool. I actually uh, visited metal manufacturer who makes these. Uh, I believe we were in Utah the other day, but I've never seen carpet rolls uh, on a pallet. 
just saves us one more time from being a scuff. Yeah. We work in a tight environment now. Um, well, it doesn't seem like it with this huge facility, but uh, I was worried about when you come in to set these these coils down perfectly. How much do they weigh? We don't lose anything. The the coils come in at just under 10,000 pound coils. Um, everything is rated between the forklifts and the and the coil carts and the uncoilers at 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds. So we can perfect. put five uh, coils on a semi and they ship here from uh, in Indiana. They actually get rolled at the Butler manufacturing place. They get shipped down to Jeffersonville, Indiana, get painted, and then back up to us. I also like this, uh, little magnets to keep them together. Yeah. Instead of wrappers. Yep, or doing the plastic or doing something like that. Yep. Just like everything is made locally, the entire Perfect Steel team works in the same space. I just love it how you have your office here, your studio here, instead of like breaking it all, do, would you you prefer to work in a warehouse versus like 1000% being able to see everything and being accessible. I know a lot of guys and probably you've been to a lot of different places where it's kind of they separate the management from, from the the other people, the general employees and stuff. Now when the when the when the girls come in the office or the canvassers, the salespeople, uh, anybody, um, they can come right over to the corner in my office and come talk to me. I, I it's love. Not, it, isn't it too loud? Can it be loud during the day? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, when we go and humming and stuff like that, definitely loud. But you know, you got Apple headphones. I'm sure they they cancel everything out. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll talk. You, how are you on the phone? Do you have to step out to make a phone call? No, no. I just call right there, and they deal with it. When this thing's going and making eh, 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 they just go, what's that in the background? I'm like, oh, we're making money. And then this used to be a table at a Planet Fitness uh, where they put the towels on it. You know, like when you get like the fresh towels, you know you see it now. Yeah. But like that's where they used to put the towels. But I needed a desk that was big enough for me to slide under because I'm a giant. So this is my desk. I got that for free. That's another office in the warehouse? Yeah, so that's my COO, um, Tyler Pedersen. So your executive team is actually in the warehouse. <laughs> Essentially two, two of the people that are at the top, we're in, we're in there all the time. The open offices are just one example of the closed knit family culture at Perfect Steel. We like to hire friends and family here, uh, grow the business every year with 75 people. We like to do cookouts, we like to do family outings where you've gone Top Golf and Dave and Busters and all that stuff. That's been a really cool thing to grow this community of perfect steel. Um, we work hard and we play hard. That work hard, play hard mentality even extends to some of their marketing efforts, like this branded ice cream truck. What's going on here? Free ice cream? What's the story behind this one? Yeah, so I got the shuttle bus in one of the roofing deals that we talk about and uh, then I decided to turn it into an ice cream truck. So we bought freezers, I had it wrapped and we'd go to the neighborhoods and giving out free ice cream in the areas that we need to target. I think they have older roofs, anything older than 15 years old. And uh, we give away free ice cream. So that way when the canvassers and people come through that neighborhood, they have kind of a generally warm feeling of like, are you guys the roofing company that's giving away free ice cream? It's kind of a brand stuff. And we go to a lot of charities. There's a, a free dental clinic uh, downtown Fort Wayne that we did an event for. We go to golf stuff and we just bring it there and give out ice cream. It's just cool for the brand. And, Honestly, the barrier to entry is so low. Like, I mean, most any kind of ice cream is gonna be a dollar a piece, so it's just kind of fun to go out and give a bunch of ice cream away. How many jobs do you think you got because of, uh, from this? Uh, from the maybe league? zero. <laughs> maybe zero. It's just it's just a cool thing to go. No one hates this idea. No one hates this it's idea. Just the ice cream. While ice cream has helped build their brand in the community, Austin's latest project is about making industry connections. This is your podcast. Tell me about your podcast. When did you start it? Why did you start it? Like, what do you talk about on your podcast? Yeah, so my podcast is pretty terrible right now. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not good at any we're gonna of this fix, stuff. We're gonna fix that. I, gonna pretend, <laughs> I pretend to do everything as good as I can do it. I'm not a smart man, but I get so sick all the time. And if go to any roofing uh, Facebook page, go to any of them, look at our roof. Look, look how good our roof is. You should get a new roof. Just a picture of a house. It's so boring. It's so boring, like seriously, but I'm not like- It's me, me, me. You, Here's how much money we look, make. Look at my Here's hammer. My selfie on this job. Look at, look at, I'm a certified contractor. Cool. It's so one dimensional and things like that. I needed more different media all the time to drive some noise to the, to the, the channels, the, the YouTube, the TikTok, the Instagram, the, the Facebook 
all those things were just so boring. I don't want to be a podcaster by any means of the thing. I don't want to do that. But it's the only thing that if people want to talk to me at the end of the night, instead of doing it at my dirty old desk over there and sharing a cigar and a whiskey, I can just simply come over here, we'll light up a cigar, we'll talk for an hour and a half, you tell me what you're thinking, I'll tell you what I'm thinking, maybe we'll have some laughs. Austin isn't afraid of creating marketing, but when it comes to the Perfect Steel product line, he keeps things simple. How many products do you have? I just have one metal roofing system, and I have gutters, uh, which I only try to sell just white. I got gutter guards, I got soffit fascia, and I have windows. So do you have a request for other products, for shingles, for, for sure. other metal? For sure. I, I'm, I'm hooked up with a lot of good guys that do really good work here in the area. If someone wants siding, I, I hit and up my you boys. you don't do it? No. So no. you do one product, one. several colors, that's it. That's it, 12 Turn colors. Turn down everything else. Turn down everything else. My advice, if you're a homeowner, uh, and you're looking to get some quotes or you're looking for some work for metal roofing uh, or just a roofing project in general, I always tell my people to get multiple estimates. I don't care that I'm the first one in the door. I don't care I'm the last one in the door. You should get estimates. You should take into consideration a bunch of things. Always, you know, someone's gonna tell you, don't worry about price, you know, that, you know, trust us, blah, blah, blah then go online and go find the reviews. Go find the, the history of what each company has done. Go look at pictures of what the work they've done. Um, if they're super proud of it, they should. it's very easy to upload those pictures. It's very easy to get reviews and things like that. Austin may be young, but the company he's built has the wisdom of someone raised in the industry with the passion and vision to do something different. In a world where more and more is being outsourced, costs are being cut and quality is going down, Perfect Steel is an outlier. They have brought manufacturing and installation under one local roof. Austin made a strategic bet that the higher costs up front are worth it because a metal roof is a lifetime purchase. Everyone's driven out generally the same warranty nowadays. I wouldn't get so hung up on that. Uh, everything's lifetime now, especially with metal roofing, um, and a lot of it's transferable. Uh, so when you're doing that, take into consideration, are they making the materials themselves, where they're sourcing the materials? Do they have in-house crews? Do they do all the work themselves? Are they delivering the product themselves? All these things really matter because I like to say, if you're gonna buy a washing machine from Best Buy, uh, that's great, but if you have a problem with it, they don't send you back to Best Buy, they send you back to, China or, uh, or Taiwan or wherever that dishwasher was made, wouldn't it be nice if you bought something in town, you could go back to in town and they could service you and take care of warranties and take care of all that stuff. We're a one-stop shop, so all-inclusive, that's something that you're really looking for, whether it's asphalt or your metal or whatever. Choose a place that does it all in one place, so that way you know no matter what goes wrong with your roofing system, that person's gonna be able to fix it in a timely manner and help you guys out.